Hello everyone. Welcome to your favorite learning channel, EduRep. And in today's lecture, I am going to discuss a very interesting topic from the chapter Animal Kingdom. That is Phylum Porifera. So, let's jump into our topic. How many of you are aware of this character? I guess all of us are. It's SpongeBob SquarePants. And this character was created by a person named Stephen Hillenburg who was a teacher of marine biology and presented himself as an ocean freak. So to make his students aware of the marine animals that he used to teach at his university, he created various uh, comics and also a series on such animals. So also you might have seen that the sponges that we see at our home or our mothers or we also use it, it is quite similar to this character. Yes or no? As you can see that the features of these two sponges are quite similar. Yes? So now why did I introduce this first to you? Because two things we know for sure is that these sponges or either you see the sponges that you use at home or this character. So they have a lots of pores. Yes? They have a lots of pores and secondly they soak quite a good amount of water yes so yes we know this now that sponges are the pore bearers and they soak water so yes this is our topic of today that is organisms who bear pores so about these organisms we are going to study in this chapter about their body about their uh, habitat and the kind of reproduction so all these things we are going to study in this topic that is porifera and the example of porifera phylum porifera are the sponges before moving to the details of sponges and its body let me first introduce you with the basic body plan of sponges so as we just got the idea that sponges live inside the water yes so these are the marine animals because they live in the water yes so this is the first thing that I just introduced to you. And by this image also we know that sponges are vase shaped organisms. Yes. Vase shaped. Now with the structure. Now on its surface, on the surface of sponges you can find numerous pores, various pores, small pores present here. Yes. Where I am marking in this image. So they have numerous pores on their body numerous pores yes now through these pores the water moves in continuously inside the sponges as you can see the direction of water also the blue colored marked arrow is the direction of water so water basically enters through these pores what is the function of these pores the water moves in continuously through these spores Yes. Now, as we know or as we discussed in the introduction part that the feature of sponges is to soak water. So, this is what it is doing. As it is living inside the water, it is soaking quite an amount of water inside its body. And once the water which enters inside the body needs to move out of also its body. Yes. So, it is through a single big pore where I am encircling it, through this direction, it goes out from its body. So this is the basic functioning that what happens when a sponge is inside the water. So water enters through a small pore and it exits out from the big pore. So for now, I am only introducing you with the basic body plan and how it functions about its detail we are going to further learn in this chapter to learn any phylum we must always start with its general characteristics so let us first start with its habitat so sponges are mostly marine they are mostly marine and only few of, only few of them are freshwater and apart from that they are sessile now this feature is very important because what do you mean by sessile? Means they are fixed at one place. As you can see in this image on your screen as well, 
that they do not move from one place to another place means they are sticked to the ground. Yes, so that is why they are sessile. Also, apart from being sessile, they are solitary and present in colonies. So, that is why they are colonial. Now, next we talk about their shape. So, sponges exist in various shapes such as vase shaped as I have shown you in the figure as well and cylindrical also. So, you can find these two types of structures in the image shown on your screen as well. Now, coming to its symmetry. So, basically sponges are asymmetrical. Now, what do you mean by asymmetrical? So, let us say this is the sponge that I am drawing here. More or less like a vase shaped. Also, it is sessile means it is stuck to the ground or it is fixed in the ground. It has numerous pores. I am drawing numerous pores here. Now, asymmetrical means if you are cutting the sponge from any plane, either you are cutting it vertically or horizontally or diagonally. So, they are not equal, their pieces is not equal to each other. So, that is why they are considered as asymmetrical. But with evolution, some of the sponges has become from asymmetrical to radial symmetrical. Next is the level of organization. So, sponges generally have cellular level of organization. Means the cells which are present in their body is loosely present. Means they do not form they do not form tissues. Yes. Cells are present, no doubt, but they are not modified into tissues. So that is why their structure, their structure is quite loose. Yes. Now coming to its reproduction, the type of reproduction the sponges show. So they show both sexual and asexual type of reproduction. That we will study in detail further in this topic. Now moving on to the germ layer. So basically they are diploblastic animals. Means they lack. They lack. Mesodermal layer. Yes. Mesoderm. Means they only have. They only have. Ectoderm. Ectoderm and endoderm endoderm for this reason these animals are considered as diploblastic and some of the important examples of sponges are sicon which is also called as sypha next is the spongula which is also known as freshwater sponge and euspongia which is called as the bath sponge so if we cut the cross section of sponge its internal structure will look somewhat like this. So, this is basically the LS longitudinal section of sponge. Yes. So, means if I am cutting the sponge structure like this, the internal structure will somewhat look like this. Now, this is the body wall of porifera and its outermost layer. This outermost layer of the sponge is called as pinacoderm. Pinacoderm. As I have mentioned here also that the outer dermal layer of sponges are called as pinacoderm. Now, they, the pinacoderm derm consists of two types of cells. Look here. First one is the pinacocytes and second one is the porocytes. Now, where are the pinacocytes located here? Pinacocytes are flat looking cells which are present here. These are called as pinacocytes. Now, what are the functions of pinacocytes here? Basically, pinacocytes are covering the body of sponges as you can see. Now, coming to the next type of cell, which is oval, kind of an oval looking cell. It is called as porocyte. And as you can see clearly in this image, this porocyte is helping in the formation of pores. The pore is being formed through which water enters. Now, this is the direction of current. We are talking about the water here. Yes, because water is entering through this porocyte, which is the function of this cell. Now, these pore, this pore which is formed here due to the porocyte cells, 
Now this is called as ostium. Ostium. And because you can see various pores on the body of the sponges, so these pores are known as ostia. So the name that we are giving is the ostia. All right. Now you see that this was about the outermost layer of the sponges. Now you can also find the innermost layer that is endodermal layer you can see that there are some special kind of cells which are present which are colored in yellow so this layer the innermost layer it is called as gastroderm it is called as gastroderm or the cells which are present in the innermost layer are the coanocytes are called as coanocytes now it is the innermost layer yes it is the innermost layer which is called as coanocytes now if you look at the coanocyte you will find that these coanocytes also consist of flagella they are also consisting of flagella which obviously helps in the movement of water yes now there is one more important very very important thing that we see that the ectodermal layer is called as pinacoderm and the endodermal layer is known as gastroderm now in between these two layers there is a non cellular like gelatinous layer is present in between which is colored in blue which is colored in blue yes in between these two layers in between ectoderm and in between endoderm so this layer is non cellular because you you can see that there is no cell present inside it and this gelatinous layer is called as mesohyle it is called as mesohyle now how do you think the whole structure of sponges are upright because we saw that it does not have a tissue like structure which can hold this whole structure like it is holding in case of humans so how come these porifera or sponges are standing upright so it is because of a rice like structure present inside these two layers in between the two layers which is called as spicule which is called as spicule spicule now this is helping or i can say that it's it is acting as the endoskeleton for sponges like in case of humans the muscles or tissues or the bones the skeletal structure which is present inside our body is helping as providing a proper structure to our body so in this case in the case of sponges spicule is helping in maintaining the structure of the sponges and it is made up of calcium carbonate calcium car carbonate and silica silica yes so that is how it is keeping the structure upright moving on to the next topic which is also very important topic from neat perspective that are coanocytes or the collar cells so coanocytes are also called as collar cells which are located in the gastrodermal layer of sponges gastrodermal layer which is also the innermost layer so this is the structure of longitudinal section of sponge in which we can find the outer and innermost layer so outermost layer is called as pinacoderm pinacoderm and the innermost layer of sponges is called as the gastroderm now in between these two layers the pinacoderm and the gastroderm is present a non cellular layer which is called as a mesohyle which is called as meso hi all right so in this topic we will study about the structure of coanocytes and about its features so looking at the structure of coanocytes we can see that there is a presence of single flagellum in the coanocytes there is a presence of flagellum in the coanocytes now the function of flagellum is to provide upward movement of water upward movement of water let me demonstrate it how for example this is the structure of sponges 
So the structure of sponge is vase like. Yes. Now let us say that coanocytes are present in the innermost layer of the sponges. So this is how coanocytes are present in the innermost layer. If you see from the longitudinal section, obviously. Now we know that water is entering from the porocytes inside the sponges. So these flagellum, which is present in the coanocytes, are helping the upward movement of water and moving the water outside the body of sponge. Yes. So that is how the water is moving from the sponges. Now. Since the sponges are living, they are living, so they also need energy. For this reason, the water that enters from the porocytes, water enters from the porocytes inside the sponges, it also brings various food particles. It also brings various food particles with them, which get stuck in the mucus, which is present in the collar region of the coanocytes. Done? Now these food particles, now look here, for example, these food particles are entering inside the coanocytes, yes, through a specialized cell and then finally getting digested in, in the coanocytes. So now we say that in the coanocytes, the digestion is taking place. Digestion is taking place. Now, with this information, I would like to tell you that Coanocytes are called as the digestive or we can say that they are known as the digestive system for the sponges because the digestion of food particles is taking place inside the coanocytes only. Now once the food gets digested, it enters in the amoebocyte which is present just behind the coanocytes inside the amoebocyte which helps in the transportation of food throughout the body of sponges transportation of food throughout the body of sponges. Now behind the gastrodermal layer are present mesohyl, mesohyl and as we studied that mesohyl helps in, helps in providing, providing structure, structure to sponges structure to sponges. Now, here is another function of amoebocytes. The another function of amoebocytes which is present just behind the coanocytes, these are the amoebocytes, is that they also help in the regeneration process, regeneration process in case of asexual reproduction. So, our next topic is canal system which is also a very, very important topic from this phylum. Because 80% of the question from Porifera are from this topic only. So now, let us see what canal system is. So, canal system is a system by which water enters the sponge's body and then exits from its body. So, it will be very clear from this image that you see that water is entering from the surface of the sponges that is through the ostea which is a pore. Yes. Water is entering inside the body to the spongocele, which is present internally in the sponges, and then it is exiting from the osculum. So, the pathway of canal system is very easy that the water first enters in the ostea, then it goes into the spongocele and then comes out of the osculum. Yes, so the water is entering, it enters from the ostea and exits from the osculum. Yes. Now, canal system of sponges also perform various important functions. So, the first function that we are going to discuss is the digestion. And digestion process, it helps in digestion process. How? Because the water which enters in the body of sponges, it brings a lot of food particles with them, which is digested in the coanocytes. Coano sites as we have studied earlier. Now the second function involves is the respiration. Since the water has 
quite an amount of oxygen in it. So the water which enters in the sponges also brings oxygen which get diffused in the body of sponges. Yes. So here the general all body, uh, I would rather say the outermost body or I will say the general body is involved in the, in the diffusion of oxygen which is brought by the water which enters in the sponges and also it releases a little amount of carbon dioxide as well. So that is how exchange of gases takes place. So the second function we can say that it also helps in the respiration. Now the third one is the excretion. Now here excretion is, uh, excretion is the removal of the waste product from the organism's body. So here the waste product form is the ammonia NH3. Now NH3 directly diffuses with the water which is present in the body of the sponges. Like NH3 released here is directly diffuses with the water and goes out of the body. Yes, so that is how it is also helping in the excretion process as well. In the phylum porifera, the next topic we are going to learn about their reproduction. Now, reproduction in sponges takes place by either asexual reproduction or by sexual reproduction. So, if, we ta if talking about the asexual reproduction, the asexual reproduction in the porifera takes place either by internal birds or gemmules internal birds or the internal birds are also called as the gemmules or either by fragmentation. So these are the various fragmentation because of which the process fragmentation takes place in the porifera. Now let us first talk about fragmentation. Now in case of fragmentation, a fragment, so you can see numerous fragments here. Now these fragments split from the parent body. This is the parent body. So these fragments get split from the parent body and are capable of developing into a new individual as you can see here in the image. But sometimes what happens is when porifera dies completely, so a mass of totipotent cell a mass of totipotent cell. Now, what do you mean by totipotent cells? Totipotent cells are the cells which are capable of regeneration. Means these cells can regenerate and form a completely new organism. So now what happens is, when the porifera completely dies, a small mass of cells remains, which is called as internal birds or gemmules. Now, these internal birds or gemmules are capable of growing into the new individual once again because of their totipotency, because of their capability of regenerating into a whole new individual. Now, sponges on the other hand reproduce asexually as well. So, means sexual reproduction also takes place in case of sponges. But do you know that sponges are hermaphrodites? And what do you mean by hermaphrodites? It means the male and female gametes, the male and female gametes are present in the same body, are in the same body of the organism. Means in case of sponges, the male and female gametes are present in the same structure. But the self-fertilization in this case is not permitted by nature because then there will be no genetic variation. And you know that the asexual reproduction, in case of sexual reproduction, the genetic variation is there and that is why evolution takes place. But here, in case of porifera, the cross-fertilization takes place. The cross-fertilization takes place and what happens in cross fertilization that the male gametes or the sperm cells the male gametes or the sperm cells they goes out of the sponge's body through the canal system canal system they goes out of the body from 
this particular porifera, one porifera, and then they get enter or they enters in the another porifera or the sponge. I would say sponge rather than porifera. That the sperm cells goes out of one sponge and then enters in the another sponge where fertilization takes place. Now fertilization is taking place in the second sponge in which the sperm cell has entered. Now after the fertilization, the egg cells are formed, which now divide, they multiply repeatedly and form a larvae, larva. And this larva settles at the bottom of the surface and forms a new sponge or the offspring. So that is how the asexual and sexual reproduction takes place in porifera. Now let us recollect some important pieces of topics that we studied by learning the simple mnemonics that says, Oh sun, come over the game. Let me repeat it for you. Oh sun, come over the game. Here O stands for, here O stands for ostia, which is the opening from where water enters. Water enters the sponge's body. Water enters the sponge's body. Yes. Next is the sun in which S stands for spongocele. Spongocele which is the part of canal system. Part of canal system. Yes. Part of the canal system. Now next is oh sun come. Third one is come where C stands for the collar cells. Collar cells which are present in the coanocytes which helps in the process of digestion. Yes. So we studied till O ostia, S spongocele, C for collar cells. Next is over the, here O stands for the osculum. Osculum which is the opening through which water, waste products, waste products and male gametes, male gametes exit. So this is the opening, osculum is the opening of the sponges. Last one is the G that stands for gemules. Now, gemules are the structure which are involved in the asexual reproduction in sponges. Asexual reproduction in sponges. So, the trick is, oh sun, come over the game. Let us end our topic phylum porifera with this very important question which is also repeated in various NEET exams as well. So, our question is, can our system is characteristic feature in... So they are asking that in which phylum canal system is present. So the answer to this question is very easy. That is phylum porifera which is the feature of sponges. Which is a feature of sponges in which canal system is present. Here the water enters from the ostia to the spongocele and goes out of the osculum. So this is what canal system is. So yes with this we have come to an end of this phylum. I hope you people have understood about the phylum porifera. Now you can go to EduRev and attempt these tests to understand this chapter in depth. You can also unlock all the logged videos, docs and tests of class 11th with EduRev Infinity Plan and ace your exams at less than 80 rupees per month. Thank you.